Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new distro release by Pi Labs and Greyduck. They did a little bit of a collaboration and this is known as iRaspian. It is absolutely mind-blowing. So you might know about Raspbian XP, Raspbian 95, and Raspbian X. Well, this is iRaspian. We definitely have that OSX look, and if you're not into OSX, you might not like this, but personally, I'm a big fan of the look, and I love this new distro. It has a lot of the awesome stuff that Raspbian X Nighthawk had built in, and we also get an awesome Mac OS 9 emulator along with the Windows 98 emulator. There's some preloaded freeware games that run with Box86. We have the full LibreOffice built in, GIMP, and there's tons of other apps in here that you can use on the daily. And it also has Android mirroring, just like Raspbian X Nighthawk did, using screen copy. I'm a big fan of Raspbian X, but I think I'm going to swap over to this. I just love the look of it. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick rundown, give you my thoughts on it. We're going to test some of the apps included, and we'll go ahead and launch that Mac OS 9 emulator. But before we jump right into it, I do want to mention that this is available for download at raspianx.com. Link for that is in the description, along with Pi Labs' YouTube channel. You can pick up Raspbian X here. You're just going to download it, flash it to an SD card using Etcher, and boot it up on your Raspberry Pi. Keep in mind, there's a readme on the desktop you need to go through before you really get started. All right, so here's the login screen. You're going to flash this to your SD card using Etcher. It's just like installing any other operating system for your Raspberry Pi. It's really easy to use. Base password on this is Raspberry. Once you log in, check the README on the desktop. It'll tell you how to change the root password and the user password. So yeah, here it is. If you're interested in downloading it, you can head over to their new website. Link for that is in the description. Up top here, we have our little taskbar, our finder, files, so we can go to our downloads, music, trash, and even our Pi directory, because this is running on a Raspberry Pi. By the way, this is a Pi 4, overclocked to 2 gigahertz on the CPU and 700 megahertz on the GPU. Over on this side, we have our governor, Bluetooth, internet. Now I'm connected over ethernet, so this is showing the ethernet symbol, but if you're on Wi-Fi, it'll give you that little Wi-Fi logo. Sound, date, everything looks really good and it's working really well. So down here, we also have our app dock. It does have the Chromium Media Edition built in. And as you can see, when we're loading something up, we get that little pinwheel on the cursor there. And yes, this is the Media Edition of Chromium. So yes, we do have access to Netflix. It's built into this distro. So we'll just check that out real quick. Go to resume. Unfortunately, when so there we have it. We can go full screen also. It was partially in the shade of a cliff. Really nice little touch there. We also have some other apps down here like GIMP. And as you can see here, this should be numbers on OS X, but it's LibreOffice Calc. And this should be the Mac version of Pages, but this is LibreOffice Writer. And it does work. We have the full Libre suite built into this distro also. So yeah, just like Pi Labs' other releases like Raspbian X or Raspbian 95, it does support Box86, and there are a few preloaded games in here. We'll go to Games. We have another Metroid 2 remake right here. Counter-Strike 2D, Curse Castle. Now these three here will run with Box86, and it does have Steam preloaded, but remember, this is very experimental on the Raspberry Pi using Box86, so keep that in mind. There's just not a lot of stuff that works, but there are some games that do run at full speed using a resolution of 720p. We also have RetroPie built in, so if you want to play your favorite retro games, you can do that from here. Emulation Station is still a bit slow. I mean, it's not unusable, but once you get into a game, everything works fine. So the very first thing you need to do when you download this and install it is open up the README right on the desktop. Everything you need to know is located in here. This was a collaboration between Greyduck and Pi Labs, and I want to give them both a big shout out because this is really awesome. I'm personally a big fan of the OS X look, and this definitely brought it to the Raspberry Pi. I mean, this is very smooth, especially with that overclock on the Raspberry Pi 4. And there are a few issues with this launcher down here. The Sling's cold, I believe that's what it's called. If the app runs in terminal, it will not launch it from here, but there's lots of stuff that works. So if we go over to games, and we'll just launch another Metroid 2 remake, I can launch it from here, perfectly fine, but if I try to launch RetroPie from here, it won't work. I'll go ahead and open this up. We're in game right now and it launched it directly from the Slings Cold launcher. 
But like I mentioned, if I try to launch RetroPie, which has to open up in Terminal, it just won't work. So we'll go to Games, RetroPie. It'll show me a little icon down here. Now, in order to launch apps like that that use Terminal, you'll have to go up to Finder, and we can go to Games. Hopefully, this is fixed down the road, and I'm sure they can come up with something, but right now, it's just not working with that Slings Code launcher. So if you want to run RetroPie or any other app that opens up in Terminal, you will have to use the Finder here. I'll just go to RetroPie. It's going to launch it. And with this release, he's also added screen copy for your Android smartphone. So if we go up to Finder and we go to Accessories, we have a section called My Android. I have my Pixel 4 XL here. I do have USB debugging turned on with the phone itself. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. We'll start My Android. And this is going to mirror my phone on screen. There we have it. So you can use the screen on the phone to control it, or you can use your mouse on the Raspberry Pi to control your screen on your phone. And it works really well on the Pi. He's got it set up for a lower resolution. I think it still looks good. And if you need to have notifications on screen while you're working on something else, this is an awesome little option here. I've actually had a great time using this, and I think it's a really handy feature. Unfortunately, with screen copy, what we're using here, sound does not transfer over to the Raspberry Pi, so you only get a picture. But it's great if you need to have your Gmail pulled up on your phone or your contacts list or something like that. And if it really comes down to it, you can actually play games right here. I just downloaded something simple, a little sword making game. And I mean, it's as fast as I'm moving on my Android phone. It is definitely a lower resolution than my phone screen, but it still works and I can tell exactly what's going on. So yeah, this is a really handy feature if you utilize your phone a lot for work. You can just have it on screen and uh, you can do pretty much everything you need to do directly with the mouse on the Raspberry Pi. So if you use his other releases like Raspbian XP, Raspbian 95, or Raspbian X, you know that they had a Windows 98 emulator built in. This is iRaspbian, so what they've added here is a Mac OS 9 emulator. We're going to go ahead and start it up here. And it does take a little while to boot up. So yeah, this Mac OS 9 emulator does take a little while longer to boot up than the Windows 98 emulator that was included with Raspbian X. And sound isn't working with this yet. Hopefully that gets fixed, but everything else that I've tested seems to be functioning quite well. It's just a cool little feature to have on your Raspberry Pi. Press Control Alt G, that'll unlock from the emulator, and you can close it down. And if you still want a little bit of Windows action with this release, we can go up to the Finder, Games, and start up the Windows 98 emulator. This is also included with iRaspian. So yeah, this is another outstanding release by Pi Lab and Grey Duck, especially if you're into that OSX look. And like I mentioned, I am. I personally really like the way this looks and feels. It's very snappy on a Raspberry Pi 4, especially with a little bit of an overclock. Like I said, I'm at 2 GHz on the CPU and 700 MHz on the GPU. If you're interested in downloading this, you can actually get it from RaspbianX.com. Link for that is in the description. And don't forget to check out Pi Lab's YouTube channel. You can pick up Raspbian X and this release, iRaspbian, from their new website. Now, one thing I'd like to mention when you're using this, if you just want to browse the web and you don't want to view Netflix, Hulu, or anything like that, make sure you use the regular Chromium version, not the Media Edition. This is a little unstable for browsing, but it works great for DRM content. You can get to that by Finder, Internet, Chromium. So the web browser, and we have the Media Edition. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I wanted to give you a quick look at this because I'm really digging it. If you have any questions, definitely check out Pi Lab's YouTube channel. He also has a Discord, and the link for their new download website is in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.